Yeah, I lived there for seven years. Don't care. It was very nice. Nice. I didn't. It didn't have any sort of a hold on me. It was just like it's pretty far gone and onward. That's good. You know, and you made and, and, a lot of progress. Yeah, I think so. It'd be like you know, riding. You know, a lot of people do that. They ride by their ex's house, either in the immediacy after a breakup or years later, and they're like, do they want to see a car in the driveway? Do they not want to see a car in the driveway? Well, that one I for sure burned down. Yeah, I know, and burnt down. And at some point, like, you don't care to any degree that moves you emotionally. Like, at some point, you just got to get past it. Where the incident. So if you felt bad about something you did or someone you were with or a circumstance in your life, you have to try as quickly as possible to get to your point where you don't care. Yeah. And the, and, and the best way to do that is to reimagine your life and you can even reimagine yourself. And, and, and that takes some exercise that takes some distraction. A lot of time that physically takes a move, which I always advise people to do, like get the Mm -hmm. fuck out. Mm -hmm. There Mm -hmm. are ways to move. I don't want to hear you can't afford it. And you can't, people are quitting jobs all over the place now. Yeah. Have at it, move away and, uh, and move forward. And the things that, that you are holding on to or that you are allowing to have a hold of you, they don't care about you nearly as much as you care about you, hopefully. And that is the flip, that you have to care about yourself more than you care about the other people or care about what the other people think about you Absolutely. or care about how they fit into your life. I like to say it isn't love, it isn't hate, it's just indifference. Yeah. Taken from the old, the little Tay-Tay. Yeah. I mean, at some point, it's just... It's just indifference. You get to a place where it's like, okay, you know, like this affected me before. It doesn't affect you want to get to a place where it doesn't affect you. Let it go with peace, love and light. And the universe, I swear to God, every time takes care of it. Care about the things that you want to care about. And those things should be things that care about you. And we spend a lot of time caring about things that do not give a shit about us or our lives or what we think or whatever. We obsess over them. Yeah. And it affects new relationships and it affects every aspect of your life. Like care about what you should care about. And that does, that is list making. That is writing stuff down. That Mm -hmm. is putting words on paper and the bad, like you said, don't take out the big lighter. (laughs) There's something to say under a full moon when you just let it go in a, in a, you know, a a little fireplace or an urn and you just see the embers float up to the sky and it's like, okay, poof, gone. Yeah. I Come know. Bye cath- bye. It's cathartic. Yeah. It's good. Um, yeah. All right. So, what can people uh, expect on your podcast? What are they, Lots what are they of find? colorful F words, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Food and frolic. Oh, I, I don't know. Fabulous. Yeah, it's fabulous. And hopefully, some forgiveness and occasional fucks. La- some, some occasional fucks are given. Yes. All right. Uh, this is your first time on this podcast. As you may or may not know, we play something called Worst Date. We're first date. I can't even imagine what we're going to get out of you on this. So you (laughs) have to give us either the worst date you've ever had or the best date you've had, best first date you've ever had. I don't care. Either one, your choice. Either the worst date ever or the greatest first date ever. Totally your call. Well, given my husband is in the room. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, he probably wants to hear worst ones too. Best date ever. Uh, yeah, and if the best date ever is not him, well, take your chances. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to have a knockdown drag out on the way home, dude. Um, no, we uh, my, well, the okay. best date, of course, was the first date with my husband. My my husband and I have known each other since high school, and he dated one of my um, girlfriends in high school, and so we knew each other. How kind of town was this? It's Scottsdale, Arizona, baby. Oh, you grew up in Scottsdale. Yes, that's why you're talking about. Uh, Are people fucked up here? Oh yeah. Oh, who knew? Come on. Anywhere there's money, there tends to be more <laughs> fucked up shit. Shocking. People think that the fucked up shit happens in places with no money. No, it happens in places with lots of money. Oh, yeah. well, because <laughs> there's yeah. more money to do. Fucked yeah, up yeah, shit. yeah. I know you're talking about Scottsdale, like the redheaded stepchild. I'm like, yo, dude. Yeah, it's nice here. It's, it's nice. beautiful. I, it's lovely. It's, anyway, so anyway, tell us so, best date so uh, best date? Uh, well, best date um, when we he asked me out and I fell in love with my husband's voice first um, when he called me and we started talking and I thought, man, he just sounds solid and good, you know, That's and that's a good word to hear. Solid. solid, solid. Yeah. Just like. He's a, and he is. He's a solid dude. Yeah. He's really solid so, is a good. description yeah, of Yeah. And, and I and I think for. I don't know about y'all out there. Shaky voice. If he called you in a shaky voice, you don't want that. No. Solid voice. Solid. Good. Yeah. A good communicator. So he calls you. Calls me and says, says, Hey, remember me from the fourth grade? Yeah. And we had this huge long conversation. 
And uh, and we went out to Roca Core, which is still our favorite sushi joint up on Scottsdale Road. Mm-hmm. And that was our first date. And we sat and just talked and talked and talked and had some martinis. And um, yeah. Sushi is always a good first date for we, three reasons. You know why? Why? Usually split some edamame, which mm-hmm. is a good thing. Mm-hmm. You're eating with your hands is a very sensual thing to do. Yeah. And there's usually some sharing and negotiation about ordering. Yeah. You want to get the dragon roll? Oh, yeah. There's usually some conversation. Yes. It. It's a good thing. That's true. Nobody wants to do fondue anymore. So I guess it's no, sushi. No, no, no. Not in COVID. That's not, not COVID in safe. COVID. You don't think the <laughs> boiling cheese will melt the COVID? I don't know. You I give just... me all your fondue COVID dates. You put the COVID right in my fondue if pot. Using... I will suck it right down. <laughs> if you're using your own stick, I don't. I mean, I don't know. What... I will take the stick. Okay. And nuts. okay. So worst state. Uh, worst state I've already told you about was the dude was like the chiropractor dude that my client set me up on when I was single. Well, you didn't tell me about the, a date. Was there an actual date? Yeah, we went out. We went to Cork and Cleaver, which is now it's, uh, State 44. Okay. And back in the day, and my- This isn't Yelp. Huh? This isn't Yelp. No. Well, I don't need a Yelp review. Oh, sorry. So, okay. okay. <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to give you perspective. Formerly Cork and Cleaver. For, yeah. yeah. For our well, Scottsdale-centric audience. Well, maybe you have a few listeners from here. Here? I'm sure you do. I'm sure we do. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, my client uh, set me up on this blind date and we went there and the guy was just a pompous, raging douchebag. And he was a chiropractor, not that chiropractors are douchebags, but he, he was, uh, I met him there and he proceeded to just start knocking down like double scotches and talking about himself incessantly. And after 30 minutes of talking, not even asking me one question about myself and telling me how much his Rolex cost and mm-hmm. yada, yada, yada. And I was like, ugh, yeah, dude. So I let him talk and talk and talk about himself. And then I ordered um, some expensive food and <laughs> I let that come. And then I pieced out to the restroom, high five the waiter on the way out. And he's like, are you out of here? This guy's such a dick. I'm like, I know. Peace. Yeah. Yep. Bye. Good. And yeah, I that- took off. Well, it's not. You did get some nice food. No, I didn't eat it. Oh, did you get it to go? No. Oh, you just threw it on his bill. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Somewhere on a podcast, he's telling his worst state story, and he's like, "And she ordered the steak, and then I don't know what happened to her." I'm sure he ate it. Uh, all right, that was good. This was fun. Tell us where, uh, and you didn't cry, which is good. I didn't. Progress. I did um, cry a lot. Tell everybody where they can find your podcast. Just go F yourself on Instagram, or if you guys want to hit me up on email, it's Lisa at justgofyourself.com. The traditional spelling of F? Just the F. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the traditional spelling, um, not EFF. As far just as F. us, uh, please, as always, like, share, Follow, review this podcast, and just go after yourself. Your uh, reviews mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem. More importantly, the ninth season of the Great Love Debate World Tour kicks off live. Live shows. Fuck you, COVID-fearing people. Ooh, February nice. 10th at the Boca Raton uh, Black Box Center for the Arts. Tickets are on sale for that. Um, the very next night, little pre-Valentine's show in Palm Beach, North Palm Beach, somewhere in Palm Beach-ish. Uh, the Kelsey Theater, which is a very, very nice place, February 11th. Then uh, March 3rd at the very lovely City Vineyard on Pier 26 in New York City. We are diving back into the belly of the Big Apple. Um, um, on what is the Scottsdale one happening, please? Uh, we, you know what? We did a show here at the, at the Scottsdale Performing Arts Center a couple mm-hmm. years ago. How was that? Or not a couple years ago. Like it was like the 15th show we ever did. Yeah. Kind of sucked. Well, this one, we, well, this one wouldn't, we would just make well, we'll it. We'll see. There isn't a real good venue for me in Phoenix, but we'll see. I might we'll do the Tempe Improv. Uh, we'll You're see. talking to a native. We'll see if we can work out the Tempe I'm Improv. highly connected. All right. We'll see what we can do here in Phoenix. <laughs> we haven't done a show in Phoenix since like 2017. I don't think it's been a few years. Um, so check that out. Greatlovedebate.com. Shoot us an email. Greatlovedebate at gmail.com. If you have any questions, thoughts, or something you want to forgive yourself about. Because as always at the Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time.